Hello everybody, how are you? I hope you all had a nice week. Um, Joanne, hello, how are you? Hello. Uh, Joanne, can you do this first one please? It says, my brother works on a production line in a factory. It's always the same, so now, What's a production line? Joanne, what's a production line? Hmm. So is that your ambition to work on a production line? No. No good idea. Now, so my brother works on a production line in a factory. It's always the same. So very challenging, stimulating or repetitive. Which word would you choose? Repetitive. Yeah, that's right. Repetitive. Now, Joanne, um, you, give, you, tell, you tell me about a job you would like that you think will be challenging for you. So, what would be a, just a minute, I'm typing this, what would be a job that you would find challenging? So, what would you like to do when you get older? What sort of job? Okay, and where would you like to work? What country? Um, maybe in Taiwan. Taiwan. So you don't want to go overseas? Work in North Korea or somewhere? I'm not sure. <laughs> no, of course not. <laughs> okay, thank you, Jan. That's fine. I'll stop harassing you. Okay, next one. Annie, hello. Oh, we've got this Annie 1 and Annie 2 again. Uh, Annie under Joanne on the list there. Yes. Hello, Annie. How are you? Fine. <laughs> <laughs> Annie, can you do the next one? It says the following all mean to lose your job. So all these mean to lose your job, but one is different. So she was fired, she was sacked, she was made redundant, she was given the boot. Which one is the odd one out? So they all mean you've lost your job, but one one means that you, well, can you identify which is different and why? Can you say that again? All right. One of the, all of these, mean to lose your job but one of them is different so can you tell me which one is different and why it is different and if you're fired what does that mean I lose my job yeah do you lose your job because Go on. My answer the answer is, is that's right. That's correct. Now, why is that? Now, she was fired. She was sacked. She was given the boot. They all they all mean lose the job. Now, how is that different to made redundant?
I've written the answer there, Annie, so you tell me in your words what the difference is. Annie. So, Annie, would you like to be fired, sat, given the boot, or made redundant? Okay, all these ones, one, two, three, or one, two, four, you've lost your job because you did something wrong. So if you, were if you were always late for work every day, or if you were rude to the manager, or you did something wrong at work, you could get fired, you could get sacked, you could give them the boot. In other words, you were thrown out. They, get, they got rid of you, they threw you out. However, sometimes there's just no more work. So if you worked in a factory, and the factory had no orders, there's no more work. So you're made redundant. So that means it's not your fault. You've done your job and you've done it well. But there's no more work available. So made redundant means you have, there's no more work, but it's not your fault. All these are bad. So bad, bad, bad. This isn't greatly, this isn't very good, but it's not your fault. So you can find work and get a reference for somewhere else. Now, Annie, do you understand the difference now? Yes. Okay, good. Thank you. Amy. Yes. Hello, Amy. I have a company car. It's such a great something of my job. What's a company car, Amy? That's right. Would you, have you got a company car yet? No. <laughs> oh. I don't have one. Now, no, no I've, I've got one. It's not a very good one, but it still saves me a lot of money. Now, it's such a great something of my job. Now, you either know this or you don't, Annie. It's, uh, there's one word, which is the um, the best word. Which do you think it is? There's two words which could be okay, but one's better than the other. Perk? Yes. What does perk mean? Does mean uh, um, other things you can get uh, there. Extra. That's right. So perk generally means it's positive and it's extra. So if I was going to pay you, I don't know, five five dollars an hour, that's not a good wage, is it? But if I gave you, um, what sort of car would you like most? A Mercedes or a BMW? What's your favorite car? Favorite car? No, you get money, money, all right, BMW. So I give you a BMW 7 series uh, plus $5 an hour. You you might consider that. So that would be a perk. I, I won't pay you much, but you can have a nice car. So a perk is something positive. Um, another one, have you heard of flexi time? Flexi? Yeah, flexi time. Yes. What's that? Uh, you can work uh, when you want to work. Hmm. So, um, in other words, you have to work eight hours a day, but you can start at six o'clock in the morning and finish at two p.m. So I can do that. Uh, where I work, I, I'm the manager. <laughs> so if I want to go in, I can go in. But if I don't want to go in, I don't have to. And that's one of the perks of my job. So as long as I do the work, I have to do 38 hours a week in Australia, and it's 7.6 hours a day. But I can do it in the evenings, I can do it at home, or I can go to work. 
that's how I can be free in the middle of the day to teach this class. So I have to go back to work from 2 o'clock to 6 o'clock tonight to make up the three hours I take in this class. So that's a perk of my job. Now, the other ones here, um, you could say it was a bonus. You could say it was an extra, but we couldn't say it was a pay. So three are correct, but perk is the actual answer. Okay, thank you. Elisa. Yes. Hello. I think I told you this just now. Which word describes working extra hours for extra money? All right, well, we know it's not flexi time because I just told you what flexi time was. So which is it, overtime, full-time, or part-time? Overtime. Yeah, that's right. Um, now, there's a question there. If if you work overtime in Taiwan, do you, you get extra pay? By that, I mean if they pay you, I don't know, um, let's say $30 per hour normally, would you get, um, in Australia, you might get $35 an hour for doing overtime. Does that happen in Taiwan? Do you get paid extra for doing more hours, uh, Alyssa? You do. In Australia, um, if we're on shift work, so say you have a job at McDonald's and your shift is from 4 p.m. to midnight. Um, if you work during the day, you get a basic rate. Um, it might, I don't know, but let's say it's Australian $15 an hour. That's what you get for doing the day shift. If you do the afternoon shift, which is this, you might get 25% extra. Well, let, let, so it would be $15 plus 25%. What's 25% of $15, Elisa? Let's make it $16 an hour, make it easier. What's 25% of $16? So what's 25% of $16? $4. That's right. So you might get an extra $4 an hour, which say you get $20 an hour. These are called penalty rates. So you get extra for working funny hours or extra hours. Does that happen in Taiwan, Elisa? Do you get penalty rates in Taiwan? Yes. You do, in okay. Taiwan, uh, if they do work in the um, maybe midnight, they will be paid uh, one hundred and sixteen dollars. So you get more money, okay? That's good. At least something in Taiwan. The graveyard shift. That's right. The graveyard shift is a night shift, and it's the time when all the ghosts come out and everybody dies, so they call it the graveyard shift. What is a graveyard, Elisa? Cemetery. Uh, yeah. Place where people are buried. Can you spell cemetery? How do you spell cemetery? I think that's right. Cemetery, funny word. If I'm wrong, tell me. Okay. Now who's after Elisa? Um, Carlos. How are you? Carlos, can you do this one? Women are better at something. 
you know, doing many jobs at the same time. Multi-working, multitasking, mul many tasking or many working. Which one is it? Uh, multitasking. That's right, multitasking. Now, do you agree, Carlos? Do you think women are better at multitasking than men? No. <laughs> Why? So, because, uh, I can do multitasking things. Okay, that's good. So, what? Give me an example of your multitasking. Like when I'm doing some uh, designs, I can also do my homework or project. Yep. Do you listen to music while you while you're doing your homework? Yes. Yes, I I don't. I'm multitasking here, so I'm talking to you. I'm uploading. I'm reading, and it's quite hard. So it's even harder for you in a different language. Thank you, Carlos. So, Tim, can you do the last one. Which of the following workers does not work shift? Tim, what is a shift? Mr. Tim, what's the shift? Hello, teacher. Hello, teacher. Hello, Tim. Tim, what is a shift? <laughs> not here. If you work a shift, yeah, you're right. If the verb to shift means you move from one to another, but here this is a noun. So if I say I am working a shift, what does that mean? All right, there's the there's the Mandarin. Now you tell me in your own words what a shift is. Okay. That'll do. So it's a time of work. You take turns. So in a day, it is 24 hours, and you do three eight-hour shifts. It might be midnight to 8 a.m., 8 a.m. to 4 p.m., and then 4 p.m. to midnight. So there's one, two, three shifts. That's a word you need to know, at least in English. So you do shift work. So shift work is... Um, all right, Tim, can you give me an example of somebody that might... Well, it says here... Which of the foreign workers does not work shifts? So nurses, firemen, teachers, and policemen. So which of those does not work shifts? In other words, which of these only works during the day and not the night? Teacher. Yeah, that's right. Why? Uh, because they only work in the daytime. Mm. Um, Tim, what what are school hours in Taiwan? What what times do school works? All right. It's interesting. In Australia, it's about, or oh, say, 8.30 to 3.30, roughly. But they're talking now about, uh, about two shifts. So, in other words, some students will go 7 to 2, and other ones will go, uh, I think it's about 1 till 7. So, this is to better use facilities. So, older students will do in the afternoon to evening, whereas younger students will go early. Uh, that's not being brought in, but it's being talked about in Australia. And in England or the UK, they're actually going to bring in... Uh, schools will open from about 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. 
and and it will run in two shifts so there'll be morning and afternoon shift which will be interesting uh, the teachers aren't very interested but um, it will give more people jobs and more um, flexibility for parents in some ways now we started talking about this last week and I wasn't happy with the um, with the reading I found so I found another reading which hopefully will help some of you understand what's going on in the United States now this is the guide for non-americans so um, Coco hello Coco, um, are you a non-American? I think it's a good place to be a non-American. Now, do you, Coco, do you know what this is? If you read this here, it says the Capitol in Washington, D.C. So what's the building called? The Capitol. That's his name. So now the Capitol is the is the name of this building, and that's where the American. It's not the White House, Tony. Uh, the White House is another building uh, in Washington, but this is the this is the uh, government building. So the American government um, sits in this building. Um, so anyway, it's called the Capitol. Now, no, it's O L. Now. Uh, Coco, what is a, what's the capital of America? What's the capital of America? Begins with W. Coco, what's the capital of America? Coco, talk to me. What's the capital of America called? Washington. Okay, and what does DC stand for? District of Columbia. Hmm. I, I think Colum this, uh, Columbia is where the is the name of the um it's not is the name of a country but here dc it's the area where uh, washington is so it's in it's in the state of columbia i think anyway anyway it says where republicans control the lower house and democrats control the senate so the american parliament uh coco do you know this word parliament What's a parliament? Oh, Coco is very shy today. A parliament is the government of a country. Now, in uh, in Australia. Uh, in UK, in um, the US, there's two houses, an upper house and a lower house of parliament. Now, in the States, it's called, um, they call it the lower house, there's another name I can't remember, and the Senate. So, in fact, the Senate sits in this building. So, there's two, there's a problem because Obama I think Obama's a Republican and they control the Senate, the lower house, sorry. So Republicans can control the lower house, but the Democrats control the Senate. So the two parties, the two political parties are called Republicans and Democrats. And um, Democrats control the Senate 
and Republicans control the lower house. And this is, the, this is what's led to the government shutdown because of this problem. We have the same in, New, in Australia. We have a lower house and we have a Senate. And the, um, our new Prime Minister is called Tony Abbott. And he controls uh, the lower house. Unfortunately for him, the other party called, uh, he's, he's with Labour, the other party are, con are called um, <laughs> uh, Liberals, and they control our Senate. So if he wants to pass legislation, he, has, he can get it through the lower house, but he has to negotiate with the Green Party because they hold what's called the balance of power. Cindy, what's the balance of power? Cindy Lynn, what's the balance of power? Hello. So what's meant by the balance of power? We've got two houses. We've got we've got the lower house. We've got the upper house. So, can you do you know what balance of power means? They have some power. Yeah. Let's say we've got a hundred seats. A hundred seats in each one. So, in Australia. Um, I don't know what the exact number, but let's say our, our, the current ruling party have about 80 seats, so they hold 80% of the seats. However, so they can any laws they can go through, they just pass through the lower house. Now in the upper house, they've only got say 50 seats, and that just a minute. Uh, so it's fifty. It's fifty-fifty. So he can't get re legislation passed unless some somebody else agrees here. So now I've said the Green Party. What do you think the Green Party is, Candy? What are Greenies? That's right. So they they support the environment. They're against logging. They're against mining. They're against uh, they're against everything. Actually, the Green Party is not very popular here. Everybody's sick of them because they're 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 radical. Radical means that they're too um, they're too far green. You you have to you have to have a balance between green and the environment. Yes, the environment is important. But also, we do have to mine, we do have to log. And mining is very important to the Australian economy. So there's no... Anyway, the Greens have about five seats. So by negotiating with the Green Party, it, they can get legislation. And this is the balance of power. So the Greens hold 5% of seats, and the, uh, the rest are held by the other major parties. So the, the, the Greens hold the balance of power in the Senate, at least. Now, this is the same in the United States. Yes, that's right, Pearl. They're against Roker. They're against everything. But most people here are sick of the Greens. So, a guide for Americans, and this is exactly the problem in the United States, that they only control one party. So, he says, please explain what happened. So, the U.S. government, this was a week ago now. I think it's about one week. They began shutting down non-essential services. Hundreds of thousands of workers are waking up to the news that on unpaid leave. Uh, Lulu, why aren't these workers getting paid? Pardon me. 
All right, Lulu, um, some US government workers, they're on unpaid leave. That means they're not getting paid. Why are they not getting paid? That's right, the government shut down. So the, the American government, now I think I asked this question last week, Lulu, but has the, has the whole government, whole US government shut down or just part of it? Just part of it. That's right. So it, they st they're st only non-essential services. So Lulu, can you give me an example of an essential service? Essential means you must have it. So can you give me an example of services that must go on? Mm. Yeah. Hospitals, police, defense, so stuff like that that keeps on going. So is non-essential services, hundreds of thousand workers, uh, they haven't been made redundant, but they're not getting any money. And they don't know how long it will last. It's now been one week, I think. And the shutdown triggered at midnight, that was last week, will bring a range of service to a standstill. A standstill means they stop in the world's largest economy. The US still has the largest economy in the world. It's China's catching up very rapidly. He says, why? The federal government had no choice. The U.S. financial year ended on the 30th of September. Why it runs from 30th of September to, to, I have no idea, it's an unusual day. But anyway, that's the American year. And politicians on Capitol Hill, Capitol Hill is the place where that building was, they haven't agreed on a new budget for this financial year. So it says even stopgap funding I'm going to ask you what that means in a minute, Lulu. Stopgap. I want you to tell me what stopgap funding is. So even stopgap funding deal is beyond them. And without a budget deal approved by both parts of Congress. So Congress is uh, the one of the houses. So the con actually, this is telling me things here. Congress is the name of the whole parliament. And there's the House of Representatives and the House of the Senate. So the two Houses of Parliament in the United States, their names are the House of Representatives and the Senate. And both, the whole thing is called the American Congress. So there's the Congress, there's the Senate, which is the upper house, and there's the, the House of Representatives, which is the lower house. Now, all of them must agree, and they haven't agreed, so there's no legal agreement to pay non-essential staff. So essential services are maintained because they are not, they, they get money automatically. But non-essential services must have a budget. Now, Lulu, can you tell me what stopgap funding means? No? Difficult? Mm. All right. What is a gap? So if, if I asked you what a, what's a gap, do you know what that is? What does the word gap mean? Is there a gap in your knowledge? Pardon? So what does a gap mean? Monica, if we have a road 
and there's a gap in the road. What does it mean? That's right, an interruption or an interval or something missing. So if you have a road and there's a gap, that means there's some there's a bit of the road's missing. So if we have a bridge and there's a gap in the middle, that's not a good thing. So if you have a gap in a bridge or a road, it can lead to an accident. Now, go back to the American Parliament. Um, there's a gap in the funding. The gap in the money. So they don't have any money. So as of the 30th of December, they have no money. There's a gap. And um, according to Professor Pearl, they're asking businessmen to write to representatives. Otherwise, they're stopping their donations. So there's a whole there's a whole problem thing. But anyway, they ain't got no money, so th and no stopgap funding. In other words, they get, if you stop the gap, that means you fill the gap. So stopgap means filling a gap, filling a hole, and there ain't no funding come through. So they st they have no funding even for a brief period. So they're st they're still not running. Why can't they agree a, de a deal under the U.S. Constitution? Monica, what's a constitution? So, Monica, does Taiwan have a constitution? Yes. Okay, what does it mean? Yeah, it's like a system of laws. So, it's the laws you have that govern your country. Now, does Taiwan have a constitution? Monica, does Taiwan have a constitution? Yes. Right. Um, do men and women have equal rights under the Taiwan constitution? Okay, do you think women can multitask better than men? <laughs> you're doing what we call sitting on the fence. That means you're not giving me an opinion. So Dave, what's sitting on the fence? Yeah. What's sitting on the fence? Sorry, I don't know. All right. Um, do you have an opinion about the question I asked? Do you think that women can better multitask than men or men better than women? Which one do you think? If that's a fence and you're sitting on it, that means you have no you have no definite opinion. So I've asked I've asked two of you now, I've asked you and I've asked Monica and none of you have given me an opinion. So my question is, are you sitting on the fence? That means that you're not sure of your opinion, so it, it's still forming. So, and I, yes, I can see you. So, okay, so anyway, getting back to this, under the US Constitution, the president cannot unilaterally bring in legislation. Unilaterally means he cannot do it by himself. He cannot do it uh, one-sided. So both sides must agree. Unilateral means one side. Bilateral means both sides. So he cannot unilaterally bring in his legislation. So 
So he's got to, he must consult his party. And despite weeks of talks, Republicans continue to include cuts and delays to Barack Obama's Affordable Care Act in the budget legislation. So the House of Representatives is controlled by the Republican Party. Remember, there's two parties, Republican and Democrat. And the Republican Party are, are deeply opposed to Obamacare. So they've, they've tried to use the budget as leverage Leverage, um, Jocelyn. What's a lever? If you, if you, what's a lever? So Jocelyn, what's a lever? That's right. So Carlos has put the answer there for you, Jocelyn. It's something used to lift an object. So, um, Jocelyn, can you change a car tire? Jocelyn, can you change a car tire? No. Why not? I can drive the car. Oh, that's fair enough. You, will you use a lever? We actually call it a car jack. And if you've got if you've got a, a car, and I'm not very good at, dra at drawing, so let's say you have a, a car with wheels. If one of the wheels falls off, your car won't go. So you have to change the wheel. So what they do, uh, oh dear, oh dear, I can't draw. They, they jack the car up. They put the car up with what's called a car jack. And it's a lever. So a lever is something used to move something. So they use this, they move something up or down using a car jack. Now, if you go back to this thing we're talking about, it says the budget is used as leverage to crowbar changes to the act. So they're using the budget to force Obama, to try to force Obama to, to come to their point of view. Now, Leo, based on this, you've got two parties, the Republicans and the, um, the Democrats. Which one is Obama, a Republican or a Democrat? Which one is he, Leo? Uh, the Dem Democrat. Yes, you're correct. How do you know that? Because uh, control of Obama's Democrat. That's right. Democrat. So Obama is a Democrat, and he does not control the House of Representatives. He only controls the House, the lower house. So anyway, so they're trying to use this budget. Uh, the Republicans are trying to use the budget as leverage to force him not to put through his Obamacare. Healthcare. Uh, yes, I think it is Pearl. Um, it's more. It's a balance that you're talking about. It's an interesting example. Um, just a minute. Uh, recently, there was some idiot that walked across.
Uh, yeah, here we are. Um, just let me show you what Pearl is talking about here. Oh dear, oh dear, just a minute. Now, now, Leo, there's a picture coming up. Tell me about that picture. What is it? I've got, I'll help you telling you this is Niagara Falls. So it's a waterfall. It's Niagara Falls in America. What's that idiot doing? Yeah, that's right. You're walking across the wall. Now, this here, why does he need this? He wants to stay in balance. Yeah, he wants to balance himself. So it, it's sort of a lever. It's giving it. It's allowing him to to be very careful. Now, would you do this, Leo? He got paid. He got paid about five million dollars for this. Would you do this? Yes. You would. <laughs> All right, so Leo the tightrope walker. Um, yeah, well, it, the the thing is, Pearl, you've got to be alive to spend it. Um, this guy actually got to the other side. I think this guy, I can't remember his name, but there's a famous family. It comes from a family of acrobats. Um, they're called the Wall. I can't remember, but there's a whole there's a whole family of these idiots, and they they all walk across waterfalls and tight ropes in circuses. Very very dangerous. But anyway, each of them each of their own. So anyway, that's it's a sort of lever in a way. To get back to this uh, <laughs> this leverage thing here. Um, sorry, done that one. How much? So, I've lost is it to do. Will this shut down? All right. So we talked about the budget as leverage. Now, will the shutdown mean the entire U.S. government grinds to a halt? That means just, you know, comes screeching to a halt. No, it's not an anarchist dream. Now, uh, Mike, I'm going to ask you in a minute what an anarchist is. So, Mike, I want to know whether you're an anarchist. Essential services such as Social Security and Medicare will continue. U.S. military will keep going. Obama signed emergency legislation to keep paying staff. So he does need some funding, but he can do that himself. He can give essential services. He can act unilaterally, but he cannot act unilaterally for non-essential. Non so a non-essential goes to employees, to rangers, They've been told to take an unpaid holiday. Now, Mike, why, if everything shut down, why would that be an anarchist dream? So, if all services shut down, why would that be an anarchist's dream? What do anarchists do? I know that's what you have to look up. Oh, yeah, sure. You're allowed to use your dictionary. That's why I tell you. So if if I ask you something, you you're very welcome to look it up online. I'm trying to get you to do it. So, and or if you're very lucky, um, 
Perl or the Tiet or yeah, there you are. Perl's put the thing up for you in um, Mandarin. So what's an anarchist? Uh, so can you repeat the question again? All right. The question's written there. Why? Why would if if all services in the United States shut down, that the police, the army, everything shut down, why would that be an anarchist dream? Because all they, all they want to think is that there's no government in the world. That's right. Because there would be no law. So they, they yeah. could steal, murder, rape, no law. And an anarchist is somebody that likes no laws, do what you want. So what about you, Mike? Are, are you a law-abiding, uh, we call it a law-abiding citizen? Or would you prefer to be uh, an anarchist? I don't think it's it's a very silly it's a very it's what we call a black and white question yes or no. <laughs> I I don't like to be controlled so maybe sometimes the law I I will not care about the law. Yeah. Mm, so careful. Uh, yeah. Yeah. The so you know the government. Yeah. You know the Taiwanese government watches the watches these lessons so don't be careful what you say. <laughs> okay. Thank you. <laughs> Now, it says, what happens now? US, US politicians, they're actually, they've already met, and they haven't yet, as of this morning, they still have not reached any, um, any agreement, which is getting a bit ridiculous. The lower house, a bipartisan committee. Bipartisan means there's members uh, of both political parties. So the members of both political parties in a bipartisan committee. The Senate is expected to reject it, sticking to its position that Obamacare cannot be unraveled. So uh, Obama's not shifting. There's no compromise. A compromise is like um, an agreement where both sides give way a little. So they each agree to something, but not. So there's no compromise, and it's all over this Obamacare, which is health care. Uh, Obama wants to give free medical care to the homeless, and some of the other people don't want it. Rich people don't want it, and they're represented by the um, the other party. Federal staff will remain unpaid until the budget is agreed. Stopgap is an option. It's not yet happened because it would. Now, this is the reason that Obama doesn't want stopgap funding, which is interesting. So Obama is wary. He wary means a little bit scared. So, um, Sean, wary means scared. So you give me an example. of an animal that would make you wary. Hello. So that's my question, Sean. Give me an example of an animal that would make you wary. So in other words, a little bit scared. A monkey? Yeah. Are you scared of monkeys? Why? Because they will, they will, they will um, bite for us too. Yep, the scratch and bite, and they carry disease. Uh, I was actually thinking of something larger, like uh, how about um, how about a rhinoceros? Are you wary of, be, of meeting a rhinoceros? Rhino?
So they make you scared. Now, Sean, go back to this thing about Obama. It says Obama is wary of stopgap funding. Remember, stopgap means funding that is for a, a, a limited period. So it might be for one month just to allow people to talk. But he argues, he says he's, he's wary because that would simply guarantee a repeat fight in a few weeks' time. So if he got stopgap funding for about four weeks, why does he not want stopgap funding? So my question is, why why does Obama not want stopgap funding? That's right. So in other words, it doesn't solve the problem. It just carries it on for next time round. OK, thank you, Sean. Now it says, how much damage will it cause? It referring to the um, close down. If people aren't getting paid, they won't spend as much. They can't meet financial commitments, mortgage and credit card payments. Karina, what's a mortgage? Remember from last week, what's a mortgage? Sit there in uh, Mandarin. So, what is a mortgage, Karina? A loan for a that's right. Have you got a mortgage yet, Karina? How old will you be when you get one? Maybe, maybe 18. Okay, will you be married? I don't know yet. 14 children? Too, too many. Too many. Two? Okay, um, Karina, in, in, in Australia, we have a Chinese uh, dating program on television called You Are The One. Do you know what I'm talking about? No, I don't know. No, I it, it don't see it in Taiwan. I'll come back to that later. Um, yeah, that's interesting. Pearl. I thought, um, yes, it is a loan. Uh, we call it an educational. We're, we're talking about what Pearl has written here, that many of you have borrowed tuition from the government. Um, that's an educational loan. We have that in Australia. They call it um, the Higher Education um, Contribution Scheme. This is Australia's loan system for students. Um, and the way it works in Australia, I'll just put your picture off there, Karina. The way it works in Australia is that um, students can borrow money to pay for university. While, while they are at uni, there is no interest on the money and no payments. When you get your job, you have to pay the money back. So that's the, the, it's called the HEC scheme, and that applies to Australia. And if you do a degree, uh, if you do um, a three-year degree, perhaps in a Bachelor of Science, it will cost you a, about probably forty thousand dollars Australian. If you did medicine, it'll cost you 
a lot more. For example, it's a it's a six year course. It might cost you two hundred and forty thousand. So, and if you did engineering, it might be at, it would be at least um, say a hundred thousand Australian. So that's quite expensive. I don't know what it's like in Taiwan, but doing and in America, it will be double that again. So the costs here are nothing like the American system. And I don't know what it's like in Taiwan. But um, anyway, getting back to this, if people are not getting paid, they don't spend money. So analysts um, at this global group have calculated it'll knock 300 million a day off US economic output. So every day, America loses $300 million. So in three days, they've lost nearly one billion dollars. Let's remember that's US dollars, not the dollars that you have. So that's quite, um, and that the US nominal GDP was 16 trillion last year. Um, Ray. Yeah. How many zeros on a trillion? So how many zeros on one trillion? What what's that there so far? So that's one this is one million. So what's a trillion? What's a billion? No, that's a billion. So what's a trillion? Yep, twelve zeros. So one million million, or one thousand billion. So. 60, America's economy last year was 16, 16 million billion or 16 trillion. So that's quite a lot. So, what, um, Ray, do you know what GDP means? That's correct. What does it mean, gross domestic product? That's right. It's like the country's income. So the gross domestic product is 16 trillion. So that, that's the income of America last year. So Australia's gross domestic product, I think, I think ours is about $3 trillion. I think. Um, Taiwan is probably similar, so that's a lot of money all the same. Now, the key issue is how long it lasts. So, oh, that's interesting, just a minute. How did Ray get back on there? Just a minute Ray, I'll try and make you go away. There you are. All right. Moody's Analytics reckons a two-week shutdown will cut 0.3%, while a month long will not 1 point. Now, 1% 1 of 16 trillion is a fair amount of money. And America already has a massive debt, so it's not a good idea. When did the shutdown last happen? 1995. Uh, Rosie. Hello. Do you, do you know Bill Clinton? I don't mean personally, but have you heard of Bill Clinton? No. Mm, interesting. <laughs> oh, yeah, all right. I'm not, I won't ask you why you know him. Don't worry. <laughs> He's famous for being a president of 
other things as well as a prejudice. Anyway, now, can you try and say that name there? See how you go saying it. This one here. How would how would you pronounce that? Yes, yeah, not bad. Newt Gingrich. Now, um, so Bill Clinton was the president in 1996 when when the last budget when they last had this problem. Now, if you read this, how long was the shutdown last time? So the last one was about 17 years ago. How long was that shutdown, Rosie? How many weeks? Four. Very Four. good. Okay. Now it said in the 1980s it was a more regular event, and partially shut down on 17 occasions before today. So, question: When was it more frequent? In the 19 in the 1980s or 90s? That's right. What year were you born, Rosie? 1995. 1995. So all this was before your before your birth. <laughs> so this is the first American. Actually, it's the second American shutdown since you were born. Just okay. Uh, thank you, Rosie. Um, this is the last slide. Then we'll have a break. Why doesn't it happen in other countries? Um, because it's a product of the US democratic system. Uh, if you have the, a democracy, this is the sort of problem you have. The president is both head of state and head of the federal government. Um, but, but he does not have a guaranteed majority in either of the legislative, the legislative bodies of the two houses. So where laws are debated and voted, so it can it cannot simply ram through laws. So the president must he's in charge of the system. But uh, John does President Obama have absolute power? What does that mean, absolute power? Yeah, he's like a dictator. So absolute power means a dictator. Now, can you give me an example in the world of somebody that has absolute power? So give me an example of a country where there is abs there is a... So give me an example of a country that... The, the king of the Thai, Thailand. Yeah, yeah, well... Sort of, uh, but Thailand has a um, has a uh, has a government. So, can you think of a place um, uh, where there's a dictator? I'm thinking of one that causes a lot of trouble, uh, not far from you, actually. I don't mean China. Yes, and he's got it there, North Korea. And there's another, yeah, another one in Zimbabwe. Uh, North Korea is um, Kim Jong Il or something like that. Zimbabwe is Robert Mugabe, and he also has absolute power. If you do something wrong, he kills you. Now, so President Obama can't do that. He has, to, he must consult, um, he must consult his government. Now, the same occurs in England. Tax and spending are different. They're presented to Parliament. These changes, they have a finance bill. And 
very, it just wouldn't happen in England. They wouldn't stop it. They're not stupid like the Americans. No, so they, they simply pass a law and it gets passed because um, in England, one house, there's two houses of parliament, and if the lower house say yes and the upper house of lords said no, they the lower house can actually overrule them. So the lords, that's the upper house called the lord, they have no power to reject a money bill. They can delay it, but they cannot reject it. So it, this can only happen in the States, or at least at this stage. How the market's reacting? There's no panic at the moment. Investors are calculating shutdown will be short, but prepare for nervousness as that debt ceiling level. Now, the debt, the Americans have a debt of trillions of dollars, and they're talking about defaulting, the Americans defaulting on their debt payments. Uh, Ivy, what does that mean? The Americans are defaulting on their debt payments. They won't pay. Now, Ivy, if you had a loan, say you had a mortgage. So, Ivy, uh, in uh, in ten years' time, when you're thirty, you have a, a mortgage and three children and two husbands. Um, if if you default on your if you default on your debt on your mortgage, what does that mean? So if you default on your mortgage, what does that mean? So explain to me in your words, if you have a mortgage, that means a house loan, and you default on your mortgage, what does that mean? I've written it here for you. Maybe I don't have to pay. That's right. Now, if you don't pay, what will happen? You'll, yeah, you'll lose your house. Now, that's that's what everybody's worried about. So if America default on their debts, this can lead to a global financial crisis. Um, Johnny, tell Johnny, me what a global financial... Uh, Johnny, I'll have, to, I'll have to put you off. You've got your mic set wrong. Vicky... What's a global financial crisis? Um, it's about um, the worldwide crisis. Of yeah. Vicky, you're in your dorm, are you? Yes. Okay. <laughs> All right. What's a global financial crisis, Vicky? Uh, it's financial problem in whole world. That's right. So the whole world's affected. We had, do you remember the one in 2008 or were you too young? Can you remember we had a GFR? No. Probably not. <laughs> no. no, we had one four years ago and it was a bit of a crisis. Okay, Vicky, thank you. All right, so that's the Americans. Uh, they're still squab they're still squabbling. Uh, squabbling, uh, squabbling means arguing. So the 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 two houses in America still squabbling, still arguing. No decision has been reached. I think that the 
um, I think that the time to pay is, is in a few days. So if the, the Americans, they're unlikely to default because if they do, it will threaten the whole world and I think they will probably come to a compromise before then. That's what happened the last time. Okay, shall we have a break, Pearl, for a few minutes? Yep. Okay, we're talking about the difficulties with U.S. government banking. What about the health care program? Along the way, <laughs> uh, what is the case that they have had health care programs like that? Do you think that they are still going to enjoy the benefit of health care? Yeah. The Obama, the, the Democrats want to delay it. They're trying to delay it, and they say, but the trouble is, the more it's delayed, the less chance it will have of starting. So Obama's saying, no, I want to start it. And that's, that's the problem at the moment. But it, I think that Obama will probably, I don't know what he'll do. Um, I mean, but that's, you know, that's the problem. And eventually, uh, the Americans need Obamacare. They have no no health care for the for the poor and that's what it, that's what obamacare is no it's only health care for the poor if if you if you are homeless or no income or low income, you get free medical care. Otherwise, you pay. How much do you have to pay? Oh, it's very expensive in America. I lived in America for a year, and um, I, went, I had a I had an operation on my eye, uh, and it cost. It was I I had a. I, I had a scratch on my eye, and I got an eye patch. They put me on an eye patch and some ointment, and it cost me five thousand dollars for for two treatment two two treatments, and and in Australia. Uh, but well, Obamacare would get if you you know you'd have to pay if you had if you had insurance, but. Most people in America who have jobs have medical insurance as part of their um, job. So health care is paid by the as part of their job, you know, job payments. Is it the same situation in Australia? Uh, Australia has what's called uh, Medicare. Um, and it's free medical care for all. It's a bit like your system. If that, your system's even better. But Medicare, uh, we pay uh, one percent of our income for me for Medicare. So if I have if I have a hundred thousand a year, I have to pay one thousand dollars extra on my tax. So my tax rate's about thirty two percent. Plus, I have to pay an extra one percent. So, in total, I pay thirty-three percent, and one percent goes to pay for Medicare. That's the, that's the law. Okay. I'm in that thirty to forty percent bracket as well, but I don't have to pay that much for the Medicare. I think your taxes are lower. Yes. Yeah. Ten minutes or so. Okay. No, we'll go and have some health care. Okay. Okay. Pano. Pano, can you talk? Hello, Monica. You're shouting. Hello, Monica. How are you? You're 
You need to say it, Monica, not type it. Hmm. What course are you doing, Monica? So are you doing M M I M I S or? Yes. Why do you want to do that? Mm. All right, since you're so shy. Monica, do you know what a volunteer is? Okay. There's two. That's right. So, two volunteer is choice. So you make a, and to be volunteered is no choice. So this is going to happen to you because. So I'm volunteering you. This is going to be your question, Monica. So the first question is yours, and it's there's. I'm going to play a listen. I'm going to play some uh, a video in a minute, and the first question is yours, and it says, "Why did Maria Schiff?" It should be said, "What did Maria Schiffrin claim about her boss?" So that question is yours. Okay. So the first question is, what did this lady can say about her boss? Now, okay. some of you will know this. Um, this is the text where a woman in Taiwan, uh, I think, I think she's from America, quit by video on YouTube. Um, so anyway, I've done. This is a news report from the United States. So the first question is Monica's. Um, the second will be um, Pano. Are you there? I know you're uh, in your dorm, but can you talk or can you type? All right, I haven't come back yet. All right, uh, Bob. Hello. So Bob, can you do this question, please? Question two. Yes. So that will be Bob's question. Uh, Bob, the second question is, uh, what did she do to express her frustration? So um, you need to have a look at the video. Alan, can you do the next one, please? Number three. Now, Alan, th this is a reasonably hard question. Um, so Alan, can you hear me? Can you text and say yes? So no, Alan. All right, uh, Claire. Can you do the next one? So this will be Claire. Are you there, Claire? Yes, I can see you. Claire, can you do the next one, please? Now this is quite a difficult one. It says that the U.S. Mail newscast that there is some irony there. Claire, do you know what irony means? So Wendy's put that Mandarin word for you. So do you understand irony? So Claire, can you talk? Yes. Okay. Can you do that question? Do you think you'll be able to do it? So why does a newscaster think this is ironic, okay? So see see if you can get it. 
If not, don't worry. It's a hard question. Okay? So yours is number three. All right. So the first one is Monica. She volunteered for that. Good old Monica. The second one will be Bob. The third one will be Claire. Now the fourth one, how did the company respond? Uh, Leonardo, are you there today? Yep, I can see you. Leonardo, can you do number four, please? Okay. Thank you. So the four, um, Leonardo, um, had the company respond. Tony, can you do five, please? Yeah. So your question is, um, how was the ending of her video different to the company video? Okay, so that will be Toonie. So, Henry, number seven. Okay. That would be good. All right. Can't see you, Henry, but Henry, it says, why did the woman who resigned say about her lunch breaks, and what was the response of the company employees? So there's two questions there. What did she say about her lunch breaks, and um, what was the response of the employees to that accusation? Will, can you do number eight? It says, why are a lot of uh, Americans unhappy with their jobs? They give a very specific reason, so see if you can do that one, okay? And the final one, Eric, uh, can you do this one? What does the male newscaster finally say about workplace disagreements? How does he think they should be solved, okay? So that will be Eric. So I've got one is Monica, two is Bob, three is Claire, four is Leonard, five is Tony, six is Henry, seven is Will, and I've lost somebody. Nine, nine is Eric. Have I missed somebody out? Henry. I missed I missed question six, did I? All right. Um, thank you for that. Uh, so I've got one, two, three, four, eight, nine. If I get them wrong at the end, tell me. Um, you you stick with question Henry, you stick with question eight. Is that right? You're doing eight? Sorry, seven. <laughs> oh, dear. All right, you do, Henry. Um, Rita, can you do question six, please? Thank you. So that the number six will be Rita's. All right, now, if we go to the... Now, though... Uh, I've I've left Pactor at the top. That was my mistake. Um, that this is not Pactor. It's um, something else altogether. Uh, Wendy, when you're ready, could you click to start the video, please? Earlier this week, we reported on Mariana.
Okay. The first question is Monica. What did why did Maria what did Maria Schiffering claim about her boss? That's right. So he said, so he's talking about member who's working. When she makes videos, he's, he's worried about quantity and the number of views, not the quality of the video. Okay? So he, he's worried, she's, she works in some sort of video place, and he's worried about the quantity of the content and the number of views, not so much the quality. That's, so that's what she says anyway. Bob, what how did she do to express her frustration? Uh, okay. um, hmm. So she put subtitles indicating her frustrations. So she expressed herself online, in other words. Um, Claire, did you get this, or was it too hard? So the irony was that he says he's unsure of the content, but he got a ton of views. So he's saying that the content, the irony is he doesn't really know, understand the content, but it's got lots of views. And remember, she's the one complaining about it. So she did. he thinks that she didn't actually succeed in what she was trying to do. She's got lots of views, but... He doesn't seem to know. I, I think the video is fairly obvious. I think he's an idiot, personally. But um, that's why he thinks it's ironic. Claire, would you have done this if you were not happy in your job? Claire, so if Claire, if you were unhappy in your job, would you have done this? Put a video on YouTube? No. Hmm. What would you do? We say in English, grin and bear it. So in other words, just do nothing, just do your job. This girl didn't. Okay, how did the company respond, Leonard? It seems that the boss uh, talked about the video. Yeah. Um, again, can you make videos, Leonard? Uh, not really. Can you dance? A little bit. And careful. We might ask you to. Thank you, Leonard. Um, Tony, how was the ending of her video different to the company's? I didn't find out what difference between each video. Okay. Well, there's the answer. Now, you tell me in your own words what the difference was. So, what did she say? And what did the company say they were doing? The company say they were fired. That's right. So she says, I quit. That means you leave her job. So the company said, right, we're hiring. So there were two different points of view there. That was their response to that. Tony, would you like to work in a place like this? Where do you hope to work? I 
don't know yet. Okay. Um, Rita, what would the employer have done in the United States? Yeah, but in the United States, if somebody had put a video online, the company might have sued the employee. What does that mean, sued? Would you like to be sued? Mm -hmm. They go to court. All right. Sued means they go to court to get money from you. So if you do something wrong, they say, right, we want you to pay compensation. So if if you if this lady that works had put her video on in the U.S., they would have sued the employee for damages. If you sue somebody for damages, that means they say we want money from you. So it's not a good thing being sued. I don't know if it happens in, in Taiwan, but it certainly does in Australia. So, Henry, what did this woman say about her lunch breaks and what was the company response? Uh, the woman said she doesn't have time to go out eat at a restaurant and she has to eat at her desk. What did the company say? I forgot what the company said. All right, what did they say? There were no restaurants in the area, so they had to eat lunch at their desk. Do you think that is true? Pardon me? Do you think that what the company is saying is true? Uh, I don't think so. No, neither do I. I think they're probably... <laughs> yeah, they can go get something from there. All right, thank you. Will. Um, why why a lot of Americans have unhappy with their jobs? Yeah, but these aren't Americans. These these are Taiwanese. So the the lady gave a reason for Americans being unhappy, and that reason was. They never get a chance to rest and... What does that word mean, rejuvenate? All right, look it up online, that's why I'm asking. It means to... Um, uh, do you know the word revive? Well, when you... Will, when you're stressed... What do you do? So when you're feeling stressed, what do you do to relax? Listen to music. M music? What sort of music? Uh, pop music. Okay. Um, now that's like rejuven, rejuve. Sorry. That's like rejuvenating yourself. If you rejuvenate, it, it means uh, it actually means make yourself feel younger. And that uh, some people have a holiday, and they feel rejuvenated. They feel better because uh, sorry, it's rejuvenated. That's spell rejuvenated. That means they feel younger, they feel fresh, they feel less stressed. So they, they don't get that chance in America. They work very hard and they don't have many holidays. So a lot of people are unhappy. They never get rest and they never get holiday. Okay. And finally, um, Eric, uh, what does a male newscaster finally say about workplace disagreements? Just 
Mm. What do you think of that response? Do you think it's sensible or stupid? <laughs> would would you dance? No. No, neither. most people wouldn't. Now, Eric, what do you think of this whole thing? I, 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 you've seen the video in Taiwan of this girl, have you? No. Haven't you seen it? This this video has gone viral. At least in the West. This girl put out this video about a week ago, and it's had millions of people view it. And the girl works in Taiwan. Hasn't it been on the local news? That's interesting. It's all right. Um, Rita, have you seen this video online? Yeah. You didn't. <laughs> you lot don't watch any news at all. You're horrible. <laughs> all right, that's all right. Well, as I said, in the West, this, this whole video uh, has gone viral. Um, David, do you know what that means, going viral? If a video goes viral? <laughs> it's not really handsome. Oh, handsome Henry, you mean, right. All right. <laughs> so if a video goes viral, what does it mean? Don't know? Yeah, if a video goes viral, what does it mean? So if a YouTube video goes viral, what does that mean? No, wait a minute. I'm going to show this to you. I cannot believe you people haven't seen this. Just a minute. I'll see if we can play it on here. This is played directly from YouTube, so I'm not sure if it will. All right, an interpreter. This is from a girl working in Taiwan. You'll have to watch the ad first, I'm afraid.
also a teacher I can I think that I I know when it's your uh, you need the Sorry, go on. Um, it means the uh, uh, video is very interesting for when there are everybody wrong to you. That's right. Things is funny and uh, they want to share, share it to, uh, to their friend or their family. And, uh, That's right. Yeah. So this, over 15 million people watch this video and some um, somebody earlier, uh, Monica and Rita said, "Spread like a virus." That's right, because a virus is a form of um, is a form of what we call an organism that gives you infection. And if you get if a virus, it's a bit like um, chicken chicken flu. Many of you worried about Chinese chicken flu a few years ago. That was a virus. And if a virus spreads, it can spread to millions of people. So somebody has used the term gone viral to talk about um, a video that's being watched by millions of people. So um, Justin uh, Bieber, or whatever his name is, a lot of his videos have gone viral because all the young girls like him. I would hope that most of you have grown out of liking Justin Bieber, but I know Pearl likes Justin Bieber. He's one of her favorite singers. That's a joke. Um, but a lot of videos of his have gone viral. It simply means that thousands or millions of people have watched the videos. I can't believe you haven't seen this in Taiwan, because this girl, I think she's, I think she's American because she's quit her job and I think she's going back to the US, but she's an American Taiwan because she speaks uh, fluent, Ch fluent Mandarin. Okay, Pearl, shall we have an... Yes? Um, what's your advice for young people posting something like that? Although it goes viral on the internet, but what, what's the impact on my their view for her? Well, the impact, the impact for this girl is She's being given a job uh, in TV in the United States. She's actually got a job with a lady, uh, a well, oh, um, the the black lady in America who owns the me a media channel. Um, sorry, her name's gone, but she got a job in the TV. Now she was lucky because she did it very well, but uh, she's never going to work in the Taiwan again, I don't think. But it can be positive, it can be negative, it depends how you do it. But um, she works for an animation company. She made a, she took, she took a risk by doing it, but that risk got her a job. And she's quite happy, thank you. Would I recommend it for the class? Um, I don't know about a dancing video, but they could make a, a video put it online, a YouTube video that showed their skills. I know some people do, it becomes part of their resume. Um, I don't think anybody would want to dance. I did ask some of um, people here if they want to dance, but um, nobody did. I asked, who was it? Anyway, but the, somebody didn't want to dance, and so I wouldn't, but they could make a, a video resume particularly if they're um, working in animation. But it's not something I'd do. Would you do it, Pearl? Would you, would, you, would you make a video of yourself? That's right. They're in Taiwan somewhere. Okay, so, okay, so what will her future boss think? You know, if she, she criticized the previous boss, then, then she, will, might, she might be the same thing to the present or future boss. 
I think it is something you can do once and probably not again. I mean, she took a chance and uh, everybody thought it was very clever. And she's now well known, certainly in the Western world. Um, my sister showed me this video actually and said, here, use it for teaching. I thought it was quite good. Uh, also, Teresa, she was talking about it the other day. Remember Teresa Pearl? And um, it's interesting. But I don't, I, as I say, she took a risk. Because it, it could have, um, it could have what we say backfired. Backfired means it turned, it, it has the opposite effect. It's negative. Um, apparently, hmm. No. <laughs> uh, no. To, Teresa is uh, doing a PhD now. She's very busy writing a PhD. Teresa used to work in this class some years ago. Yeah, that was a long time ago. It was. And also, I think the class would like to see the picture of your bird. Of my what? Your bird. Bird. I can't hear you, Pearl. It's very hard. Oh, my bird! <laughs> uh, I'll have to, I, I can show you the cat. Uh, the bird, um, the bird has gone to an aviary. Um, the the cat was trying to eat it. So, so we sent it to an aviary, which is a bird a bird place. So let let's have a five minute break, and I'll see if I can find the cat. Okay. Now, my cat is off doing things cats do, and I can't find it. Um, I'll show it to you next week. Um, the best I can do today is to show you a picture of a cat, what is similar. Um, here we are. Don't know if this way yeah, will. <laughs> do you like cats, Amy? Does anybody know what sort of cat this is? Amy, do you, do you know what what sort of cat this is? It's a it's a what we call a thoroughbred. Uh, it's a it's a particular breed. It's called a Burmese, and uh, there are different types. Um, these are they're very friendly, um, uh, and this this one I think it's called turtle, a turtle color, tur turtle shell or something. And they're very friendly and uh, they quite they tend to be small, and um, they they're person cats. They expect you know they want attention. Some cats don't like it. Uh, I've had one of these for probably 15 years now. Uh, this is a new one. It's only about a year old because the last one died. But it was about 14 or 15 when it died. So that's a cat. I used to have a bird which was called a. Um, I don't know what to do. I remember the name of them. Not a lorikeet. Um, I used to have a, a small parrot uh, like this, and and the trouble with um, Amy. What's the trouble between cats and parrots? Why can't you keep them together? Yep. Exactly. Well, you know, we we used to let this um, this thing run around the floor. It was they, they, these birds live about uh, they can live up to thirty years, and that was one problem. Um, the other was that um, the 
it used to walk around the floor and the cat used to try and eat it and the bird wasn't very happy and used to attack the cat so they would fight and in fact the this the, the bird used to win we used to call we just called it bird that was its name and uh, the pair of them would fight so we, we i gave the parrot away um it uh, it was a cat or the parrot and i felt that the cat was easy to keep cuz you have to clean the bird cage every week and that wasn't one of my favorite things to do. Amy, have you got a cat? No, I haven't had any cat. Mm -hmm. uh, some Taiwanese hate fur. I have several Taiwanese friends and they hate fur. They don't like cats. They like birds, but not cats. So it was interesting. So. Okay. Now, Amy, since you're there, what do they call this? I don't know what that. This? Well, you, yeah, it, yeah. But what is it in English? That this thing here, what they call it in English? Yes. That's right, Claire. It's a zipper. A zip or a zipper. Now, Amy, what do they call this? This this thing sticking out of the mouth? Tongue. Right. Can you spell it? Okay. Um, what do they call these? All right, what's the plural? Uh, what? One tooth, many teeth. One tooth, many teeth. Sorry, I can't spell there. Teeth. All right, what, what are these things? Yeah, they call them piercings. They're studs. They call them little studs. They're, they're like earrings, except instead of sticking them in her ear, she's put them in her in her face. Now, what's the name of this part of the face here? Uh, lip. Right, upper lip or lower lip? Yeah, upper lip. So we call this the upper lip. That's the tongue. The zipper's not real, obviously. I hope it's not real. <laughs> um, these are real. Um, is she is she Taiwanese? Maybe. <laughs> Why do you say so? She's a Taiwanese girl born in Australia. Her name is Amy. Seriously. <laughs> really? Yep, Amy Chan. <laughs> she wouldn't like me showing you this I either. Do she that. doesn't. I won't. No, she, no, I won't she doesn't have a zip in her tongue. But she did. She photoshopped this, and she stuck it on her Facebook oh. page. So I, I borrowed it for teaching. Cool. Thank, thank you, Amy. So don't, don't put one in your tongue. All right, okay. um, David. A tiny moon called Epimetheus is seen above Saturn's rings and in front of the larger moon Titan in this picture captured by NASA's robotic Cassini spacecraft. Um, my question is, how was this picture taken? Or if you like, what or who took the picture? In 
this space. Yes. Um, what what took the picture? Oh, it's not a satellite. What is a robot? So what's a robot? The robot is like a machine work for Yes. That's right. It's it's a machine that does something for you. Now, th it mentions three structures here. Saturn, um, Titan, and Prometheus, uh, sorry, Epi Epimetheus or something. So this one. Now, which is this one? Which one? One, two, or three? So, Epimetheus, Titan, or Saturn, which is it? The little one. Uh, so, Epimetheus, Titan, and Saturn. So, which, which is the little one? A tiny moon called Emetheus. So that that one is. Can you say this? Epimetheus. That's a good attempt. Epimetheus. Okay, David. Which one is this big one here? What's this one? The yellow one. Titan or Saturn? Titan. That's right, Titan. Because this is in front, Prometheus is in front of Titan, and you can't actually see Saturn, you can see the rings of Saturn. Saturn is the only planet that has rings, and the rings are made of rock, I believe. And that uh, this w these were all taken by Cassini, which was a spacecraft sent out to Titan before you were born, actually. And that's a picture. David, do you expect to reach the moon before you die? Or do you think you'll travel in space in your lifetime? You won't, or they won't go to space in your lifetime. Would you would you travel in space if it was safe? Yes, I will. Okay, go to the planet of Taiwan. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Rita. The caption says, people attend the ceremony for the reburial of World War II prisoners of war who died in a Nazi concentration camp in the city of Slavuta in the Ukraine. What's Nazi? Do you know? Yes. Who was their leader? Sorry? What was his name? Begins with H. German leader during the war. Second World War. In Chinese, it is Hitler. I'm not sure. You know? You know Hitler? Okay. 
Now, what what are the what are these pink things? Alan, tomb, tomb is the wrong word. Uh, t tomb, um, tomb is like uh, like a cave. It's somewhere where you put a body. But there's another word. There's another word for these things. So it's not tomb, but that's nearly right. That's right, Annie. It's a coffin. So, Rita, how many coffins are there? I don't know. There's a lot. Now, Rita, who who are these people? These dead people. Who are they? Rita, who are these people? You have to read this and tell me. So who are the dead people? No. I'm a, um, I don't know. No, they're not actually Jews. Actually, sorry, they could be Jewish. You're right, uh, Annie and Bob, but that's not my question. Y you know, because you, you've, ha you've said they're Nazi and they, but, um, all right, they're World War II prisoners of war is the answer I was looking for. And yes, they probably are Jewish because they died in a Nazi concentration camp. Uh, so yes, and they're, they're Ukrainians actually. So, um, interesting. All right, thank you, Rita. Tell me who to give the next picture to. So who shall I choose? The last one. Give me a name. Who? Type their name. I can't hear you properly. Pano. Or oh, is Pano is Pano here now? Hello, Pano. Pano's in the dormitory, isn't he? Pano. Um, this. Uh, my question is. It says the scarper board uses two tank-like tracks to roar across tricky off-road surfaces which would prove impossible with wheels. An 8 horsepower motor operated by a hand controller, the ball can hit speeds of up to 30 metal, 37 miles per hour. What do you call this thing? Give me a, give me a name, the, a name in English for this thing. It's a, well, it's a what board? It's a something board. Do you know what it is? Yep, it's like a skateboard. What's special about this board? What's special about this type of board? Uh, sorry, can you repeat that? Why is it different to a normal skateboard? That's right. What does off-road mean? Off-road surfaces. What are they talking about? Off-road surfaces. So off-road, roads are normally made of, I'll call it tarmac, that's that black stuff. And this off-road means mud and stuff like that. 
Now, Pano, um, tell me what your name means. So, Pano, what does Pano mean? Is it something in Buddhism? Yeah, all right, Pana, that's your Chinese name, but what what's special about your name in Buddhism? So what does it mean in Buddhism, in English? Wisdom, it's very rare. Yeah. So you are, you are so you are a unique person. Just, just pretend I'm smart. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> thank you, Pano. You can you can thank um, Rita for giving you that. All right, we'll stop there now. Um, Thank you for coming, Pearl. Anything else? All right. I'll see you next week then. Thank you for coming. Good night. Good afternoon.